Hello folks, and welcome back to another episode of MELF's Musings. This is Ken Horowitz from Sega16.com, and today we're going to be talking about the recent survey that Sega put out asking for feedback on its brands and the company overall. Now, this was a pretty long, pretty extensive survey. It took about a half hour to complete, and there were lots of references to Sega's classic brands, Fantasy Star, Streets of Rage, Shining Force were included in the survey and they asked for a lot of information, a lot of feedback about your opinions on the company and what you would like to see them focus on. There were a lot of questions that were related to mobile gaming as well and that seemed to set off red flags to many people who think that Sega is possibly considering uh, shifting over to the mobile games market only. That would make sense to a certain degree. That's a 34 billion dollar uh, year market and Sega isn't exactly setting the world on fire right now so I could see them wanting to get a little bit more involved in the mobile market but I honestly don't think that Sega is going to just give up consoles and the PC market that's been their bread and butter for for decades and I don't see them departing that anytime soon the interesting thing about this is that they recently uh, laid off a bunch of people uh, in its mobile division even though they want to focus on mobile games. It seems to be they want to change their focus completely. Uh, last summer, Sega's president mentioned that they had, or admitted, I should say, that they had lost the trust of Sega's classic gamers, and they wanted to do better. They wanted to win back that trust. I honestly think at this point that Sega needs to remember who it was who made the company a major player. And while I understand that they want to get new gamers involved, they also need to keep in mind that there are plenty of Sega fans out there. And these Sega fans are not going to be kids and teenagers. Sega has not had a console on the market in more than a decade and a half. So anyone who was born, as a matter of fact, the Dreamcast, if I'm not mistaken, was officially discontinued. It was the, the announcement was made in January of 2001, but it was officially done, gone, by March. So we're, we're looking at exactly 16 years ago this month. So anyone who was born the month the Dreamcast finally went off the market is in high school right now, practically a high school senior. So the majority of people who remember Sega and want Sega to come back are people who are in their mid-20s and older. People like myself or in their early 40s who grew up with Sega during its heyday in the arcades and Master System have been waiting for Sega to wake up from its slumber, you know, to get off the whiskey, whatever it is that's keeping the company from reaching its full potential again. Uh, I remember when the Dreamcast was discontinued, it seemed that Sega was going to instantly become the number one software publisher in the world. I mean, they had some of the greatest IP out there. They had some of the greatest and most creative teams in gaming, and now those games and that talent would shift to every console instead of just one, and that didn't happen. And uh, this kind of company kind of lost its way over the last 15 years or so, and they finally admitted that, yes, they need to make uh, strides to return to gamers' good graces. And last spring, uh, when they admitted that they had fallen out of good favor with many of its gamers, maybe many of its fans. They admitted to that and said that uh, CEO Haruki Satomi said that we'd like to win back the trust and become a brand once again. And I think that this survey is not a coincidence. The fact that it's 2016, this year's the 25th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, as well as other franchises such as Streets of Rage. I think Sega is going to try to make a push. I hope Sega is going to try to make a push at uh, trying to win back some of that confidence. People would welcome Sega. People would like to see Sega come back. Personally, as a Sega fan and as a retro gaming fan, I really think the industry still has a place for Sega. This was a company that could take very limited resources and make timeless and classic games and that didn't need to have these massive hundred person plus creative teams and a hundred million dollar budgets to make games that would 
stand up and uh, be among the best released uh, on any hardware. And I really think that it's about time that Sega get, got back in the swing of things. You don't even really need to create new IP with a back catalog like Sega's. I think perhaps only Nintendo has a back catalog as extensive. And I would honestly, when you look at the amount of properties created by Sega of Japan and Sega of America during the 8-bit and 16-bit eras, I'm pretty confident that Sega has a larger IP catalog than Nintendo. Nintendo's catalog basically comes from Japan. There wasn't any real American franchises established beyond, or Western, not just America, but Western, beyond Star Fox and a couple of others. But uh, Sega of America created a bunch of IPs, like Eternal Champions and others, that are just sitting there waiting to come back. But you could even just try to update your old stuff so that and reintroduce it to younger to newer generations for example i would love to see burning ragers with a modern engine dual analog stick support for a real 3d camera i'd love to see that you know i would love to see a, a burning rangers sequel but let's start you know let's start it off right give us a, a remastered version of the original remasters are very popular right now sony and microsoft and others are releasing remasters left and right this is the perfect opportunity for Sega to do so. All three Panzer Dragoon games, remaster them, even if you give us Panzer Dragoon Orta's engine. That's still a lot better than the original Saturn one. Yes, I know that Panzer Dragoon Orta's source code has been lost, but that's been an excuse for what? Almost 20 years now. I think that if an effort had been made to recompile or to go back, reverse engineer, whatever, to bring that code back when it was first discovered they didn't have it, they would have had it years ago. I mean, in, in 2000, 2001, 2002, when people were wanting, 2000, 2001, when people wanted a uh, new Panzer Dragoon for the Dreamcast, uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga source code was lost. And here it is 2016, and we're talking, still talking about the source code being lost. So I think it's, a, it's a, something that gamers would appreciate and would sell. Test the waters. Remaster the original Panzer Dragoon, whose source code you do have, release it as a download. Release it for a PSN, Xbox Live, Steam. Now you have Steam Link and Steam Machines. People can play those games on their television as well as on their PCs. So do that. Bring it back. I mean, obviously, old properties still have a place. We have a Monster Boy, which is basically a new Wonder Boy is coming out. Mighty Number no. 9, which is basically another Mega Man is coming out. You've got all these companies that are updating old properties and doing so successfully, and Sega is basically just sitting there watching the world go by. So what do you think? Do you think that this survey is signs a sign of good things to come, or do you think that this is just another uh, example of Sega perhaps towing our, pulling our chain and uh, not really making a serious effort or be willing to make a serious effort to get itself back into the game? Personally, I hope that it is a sign of good things to come. So we'll have to see what happens. But please express your opinions in the comments section below. And then head over to Sega16.com and check out our reviews, features, and interviews. Head over to the forum and join the community. And check out the other videos on our channel. And please uh, like us on Facebook and thumbs up the videos here on YouTube. And we appreciate your support. So until next time, this is Ken Horowitz saying, take care.